It was officially announced early May. Uh, is part of the uh, Canada Biomedical Research Fund uh, for pandemic preparedness. And uh, we submitted an application that used wastewater surveillance at strategic cross-border locations to support resiliency in supply chains that support our biomanufacturing and health sectors in Canada. Uh, so in that, in that proposal, we had actually included uh, this strategic area, Windsor-Essex, as one of the places that we'd like to continue wastewater surveillance. At the time we submitted the proposal, we didn't know if the Ontario network would be continuing uh, past this past spring. Uh, but still, the news we heard uh, late last week uh, really blindsided us. Explain that, because I think Windsor might be safe for, not necessarily safe, but you'll be able to continue your research for a while longer. But there are concerns that you had for the rest of the province. Can you explain that? Right. So the uh, the Ontario Wastewater uh, Surveillance Initiative uh, covered all 34 public health units in, in Ontario. And it was lauded as probably the most comprehensive uh, surveillance network in North America, if, if not globally. Uh you know, so now uh, with with this announcement, with PHAC making their intention of coming in and and taking over some wastewater surveillance in the province, the best that PHAC will likely do is cover three to five locations in Ontario, and we know that Toronto is one of those locations. They haven't decided on the on the others yet, uh, but that means you know we had we had almost sixty locations covered uh, in the existing network. A lot of the small public health, a lot of the small regions uh, will likely have no no surveillance. Uh, so it's going to probably uh, uh, increase, uh, lead to increases in in inequality, in, in delivery of, uh, of, of health. I'm also thinking there must be a lot of sharing that happens across all of these communities, and this will sort of put a, a damper on that. Right. So beyond just being a surveillance network, uh, the 13 academic labs that participated uh, in this initiative that was was uh, coordinated by the Ministry of the Environment, Conservation and Parks was essentially a community of practice. Uh, this whole scientific field of wastewater surveillance was new mm -hmm. uh, during the COVID pandemic. We, you know, together developed this discipline and you know a lot of the a lot of the pitfalls and challenges we overcame together, uh, but we really advanced uh, this field. So now you know moving beyond COVID, uh, applying it to influenza, to RSV, and potentially to any other emerging threat. And so we also had that sharing between public health units. What you know what would be happening in Windsor Essex uh, could be shared with what was happening in Chatham Kent, uh, and vice versa. So. What would be the long-term effects of this funding cut? Well, we there was a lot of investment of, uh, of of infrastructure and also in training of personnel. Right now, we have a we have a, a prepared province uh, to to tackle any emerging threats. What I worry about is we lose that investment, uh, and we lose uh, you know those those highly qualified personnel, uh, the infrastructure. Because when we have another threat in the future, will we be able to, you know, immediately start turning our attention to it? Do you think we will? Uh, you know, again, I, I worry. I think locally, again, we have this funding that will allow us to, to, to continue this work for the next couple of years. Um, but other places, other, other public health units, the province will not have this resource available to them. How valuable is this data? Uh, we've shown it to be actionable. Uh, we've shown how it can result in early, you know, mitigation or, or containment and uh, uh, address uh, a potential threat. We've seen that in the University of Windsor campus, for example, early in the pandemic, where we used wastewater surveillance uh, to notify public health mm -hmm. to immediately test uh, students in the residence hall and finding asymptomatic uh, uh, cases. So we know it can be actionable. We also know it helps our public health units uh, allocate resources uh, uh, to different things. Uh, so and then and then you know the the big concern right now is uh, is avian influenza, uh, it's knocking on our doorstep. Uh, there are five states in the in the U.S. right now where avian influenza has been found in wastewater. Uh, the source of that of of the influenza is unknown. Whether it's 
you know, dairy products that have been permitted discharge into the wastewater or whether it's, it's humans. Uh, so with it, again, in Michigan, uh, I've seen uh, five five wastewater treatment plants uh, on the wastewaterscan.org uh, dashboard. And so it's it's a concern. You were in our studio a couple of weeks ago talking about uh, some of that data. Any update? Are we seeing it increase since our last chat? Well, in, in locally, uh, anywhere in Ontario, we've not seen. So we use a, a triage approach looking for influenza A and Avian influenza is sort of a subclass of influenza A. We haven't seen any uh, increases in influenza A, so so good news so far. Now, with the other communities losing their wastewater testing, is there a room for you to expand your research, take over some of that jurisdiction, or are you funded to do that? No, we're we're not, uh, and and. Really, with the funding we were receiving for the Pandemic Preparedness Project, that may take away some of the plans we were hoping for in that project. We were really hoping to be able to expand our repertoire of of, of targets to be ready for what is the next emerging uh, threat. Uh, and so we, you know, we can cover, uh, you know, the, the, the Windsor-Essex region as we laid out in the proposal. Uh, one of our partners actually in that proposal is the city of Thunder Bay. So we are going to have uh, a little bit of coverage for Thunder Bay, reduced from what we've been doing with them under the provincial initiative, uh, but still providing some them some baseline coverage. Uh, but, you know, it's a vast province. There are going to be so many areas that, that are going to lose access to these kind of data. Losing access to the data, but also the expertise within their communities. Oh, exactly. I mean, it's, you know, the wastewater data requires interpretation, it requires context, and the academic labs uh, with our whole cadre of students who were involved in this uh, were, were crucial in working with public health uh, to be able to interpret uh, those signals. Any concerns that funding will be cut for you eventually? Uh, it's the life of an academic. We're always chasing the next next grant to keep our, our operations uh, uh, solvent. Uh, of, of course, I mean we're hoping uh, we're hoping uh, that uh, you know we prevail on this. There's a lot. Once this hit the news this week, uh, there's been a lot of backlash uh, from you know, both those in the medical communities, uh, but also just concerned citizens. It's amazing how many people out there are watching the dashboards. Uh, the, that are often, you know, on the public health unit websites to see what's happening in their own local communities, and they're upset. Were you aware there was that much engagement in the data? Uh, you know, early in the pandemic, I, I was because I'd hear people personally uh, who, who'd tell me that this is this is great, they, they really appreciate this. You know, as, as the pandemic uh, started winding down, uh, COVID wasn't in the news as much, started, lo- you know, not hearing that, but boy, this last week, it's, it's really been on fire. All right. We'll continue to follow this. Thank you so much for coming in, Mike.